What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. My name is James and for those of you who don't know me, I like clothes and well-made things. Over the last couple of years, I've been really kind of into denim and today I want to go over 10 things that I've learned about denim in the last number of years and I want to share those with you. I'm not going to go in any particular order. There's no hierarchy of things to learn and also there's going to be things that I leave out. So these are just the 10 things that I have learned and I think are important that I want you to learn as well but let's get into it and we'll go with number one So number one is going to be know your size and your measurements. We live in a world where the sizing chart is not great. A 34 for Levi's is not going to be the same as a 34 for Pure Blue Japan or Iron Heart. So it's important to kind of know your size and I recommend knowing your measurements more so than just your size because your measurements are always going to stay the same but your sizes are going to change from different companies to different companies. The best place that I would go is either just learn how to measure your stuff. If you need help with this there is a great website that I would use called self edge they have like a measuring chart that will help you kind of learn how to how to do that and to me that's such an important thing to kind of understand and learn knowing your measurements is such an important thing when buying denim because it's so easy to just get your wrong size or buy something and for a lot of people they don't live in an area where you can go try on these limited edition Japanese pieces or Levi's vintage clothing or it's really difficult so I just highly recommend knowing your size, knowing your measurements, measuring twice and then buying once is probably the best example and the best thing that I've learned because I have bought so many pairs of jeans that don't fit me. So number two on the list is gonna be what is raw denim? There's gonna be a lot of different answers on what raw denim is and I'm gonna do my best to kind of give you my biggest insight on that. Raw denim is un treated denim. Basically, long story short, is like denim is made, it's it's made on a shuttle loom. It's gonna be the purest form of what it comes off of the bolt, then it's cut into jeans. There's no treating, there's no washing, and there's no, it's gonna be like the stiffest form and the heaviest form of what that denim is. Raw denim is untouched denim that is gonna be just the purest form of what it is, and there's not gonna be any really changing to that. That's going to be where you see these people that are getting these really high contrast fades or they're wearing the denim that's like the heaviest weight and it's like super crunchy. The color is always pretty much the same on that. And, and so that's kind of what raw denim is. Following up what raw denim is, this is an important thing to understand the difference of, is what is the difference between samphorized denim and unsamphorized denim? So samphorized denim is going to be denim that has essentially been pre-shrunk. So we talked about raw denim and how raw denim is going to be denim that has been untouched and, and un kind of changed from its original state. Sanfrey's denim is put through a process that doesn't take doesn't make the denim any different than it is from a raw standpoint, but it is essentially like pre-shrunk. This is something that's important if you're trying to buy the jeans that fit your size and you're not worrying about shrinking or you don't want to do like a shrink to fit process. It is going to be essentially pre-shrunk denim that is still raw that you can wear and, and get fades with and stuff like that but you just don't have to worry about it losing in a few inches on the length or getting tighter in the waist and things like that you're still able to get that raw property and you're still able to get those fades that you really want but it has just already been essentially pre-shrink for you unsamphorized is the exact opposite of that it hasn't been put through a process it is in the, the most pure state of what raw denim is if you're familiar with levi's vintage clothing shrink to fit that is going to be an unsamphorized raw denim what that is essentially means is you're going to essentially buy the jeans in a certain size and then you're going to wear it and it's going to necessarily shrink around your body. That is the classic and old school way of it. Some people like that, some people don't. I prefer unsamphorized denim just because for me as my style kind of changes I like the kind of shrinking to you and make it feel like a glove I also really buy kind of classic fitting jeans as opposed to skinny fitting jeans so the an extra shrinking isn't isn't gonna be that bad for me those are the differences between a raw samphorized denim and a raw unsamphorized denim 
wash your jeans. A lot of people have this kind of idea where you will wear your jeans until they're nasty, gross for like four years, never do, never wash them, and then you're going to get these amazing fades. And yes, that is true, but you're also really hurting the denim. So as you're wearing denim and you're wearing raw denim, if you don't wash it, it's gonna get like particles and dirt and sand from just normal wear and tear that is gonna work against the uh, denim and it's gonna cause it to age prematurely or, or wear out prematurely. And that's why you're gonna have like, on the back of the knees, you're gonna see in certain areas where it's starting to rip. Depending on what you're doing, I don't wear work in, a, in an area where I'm dirty a lot. So I'm about going about 100 wears. My first wash will be coming in the next couple weeks and they're fine, but I wear them to go grab dinner. I wear them out to go thrifting. I wear them around the house. Like I'm not working in them. So I don't have to wash them as normal as somebody that's working in construction or, or as a landscaper or something like that. So washing your jeans is gonna make them last longer. The fades are still gonna come out really awesome. You don't need to go two or three years not washing them to get great fades but wash your jeans definitely something that you should be doing what is salvage denim so a lot of people are not familiar with what salvage is salvage is essentially self edge so these shuttle looms are going to have a self edging machine that is going to show like a red line or a pink line or a blue line that right there is essentially where the denim bolts are finished on the edges and that is going to be like the edge of the seam so over time people would use those edges on the side of your pants and that's where you got this term salvage denim you'll see like in brands like sugarcane or pure blue japan m almost all of their jeans are going to be salvage denim and then you're gonna see in like Capital, My Century Denim, those are gonna be unsalvaged. There is a really big debate or there's a lot of like contention on like real jeans or salvage jeans and, and, and not real jeans or not salvage jeans. That's completely up to you, but salvage denim is when the denim itself is self-finished or self-edge. It's gonna be done in traditionally older looms. Uh, there are newer looms that do it now just because they're trying to piggyback off of the salvage denim craze, but that is what salvage denim is and it's a beautiful thing. Different brands are gonna focus on different things. Essentially all denim is gonna be kind of inspired by Levi's, Lee, and Wrangler. Lee and Levi's are probably number one and number two of that. There are gonna be brand, uh, jean companies that are trying to make exact copies of like Levi's or Lee. A good example is Sugarcane. Sugarcane is essentially trying to use ins inspiration to get exactly from like the jeans from 1947 or the, the Levi's jeans from 1955 those gene companies are going to be focusing on just one-to-one -one representations of those genes. And then you have other companies that are focusing on, they, they're still making genes, but they're focusing on like fun with denim. So Oni is a brand that they're pretty difficult to get. You can get them in blue and green New York, and they're gonna focus on like fun denim. So they do this denim, I forget the exact name of it. I think it's called, it's called like the secret denim or something like that. I don't remember the exact name. They're gonna focus on fading and like having the denim look really, really like kind of cool as it ages and, and dying processes and things of that nature. And that's an important thing to know because certain people want certain things. I like heritage stuff, so I tend to go with the companies that are gonna be closer to like Levi's and Lee's than they are gonna be like Oni and Naked and Famous and things like that. That's an important thing to notice because you're gonna get different feels and different vibes out of different jeans, and it's important to know the brands that like are leaning towards the thing that you want. Or this is more than just one thing, but the different types of fades. There are many different types of fades and different type of fade characteristics. I'm not gonna get into all of them, but I'm gonna get into a few that I just think are important to know. And the fades that you're gonna wanna look for are gonna be whiskers. So whiskers are essentially like on the front of the denim, they look like whiskers around your crotch. They're gonna like fade out and kind of give you that like a whisker looking thing. 
And then you're gonna have honeycombs. Those are gonna be the probably the two most well-known thing. Honeycombs are behind the knees from like bending down and walking and they kind of give a honeycomb pattern. There are a few other versions that are kind of important to know. And within salvage denim, there's this term called railroading. That's where, or railroads, I believe. So that's gonna be when on the side of the jeans, the fading around the salvage on the outside, you're gonna start seeing lines down that. It's a really cool view. That's personally my favorite type of fade because I just think it goes down the whole leg. And then around your chain stitch, I'll get into what a chain stitch is in a few minutes, but a lot of the denim that you buy is gonna use a cotton thread. And as you wear it and wash it, cotton is going to, is going to tighten up and is going to shrink. So it's gonna pull the denim and give it a kind of a unique characteristics. So around your ankle, you're gonna see really roping around the chain stitch, which is super, super cool. But those are the few types of fades that I, I think you should know and I think are important to kind of understand and they're just really beautiful and that's really what you're focusing on if you're buying raw denim. Like I was just talking about chain stitching is a big part of denim and you know, not a lot of people can do chain stitch, so it's definitely worth doing if you're buying a pair of jeans and you're gonna have them hemmed. Make sure you know your sizing and, and everything in your measurements, just like you would so you can get the proper chain stitch. But essentially, a chain stitch is a thing that goes around the ankle and it is going to be a certain type of stitch. I mean, that's really what it is. A chain stitch is a certain type of stitch. There are vintage kind of sewing machines that will do it. Um, Left Field is where I bought my most recent pairs of pants. Those are gonna have a chain stitcher there. That It's just a certain type of stitch that's gonna go around the ankles that's gonna allow your pants to have really beautiful roping. So highly recommend doing that when you're getting into denim. Piggybacking off of what a chain stitch is, and next is going to be, don't be afraid to go a little too long on your hem. So for me, I always leave about a, one, a little bit of a cuff. Sometimes if I really wanna have kind of that vintage feel, I keep a larger cuff, but don't be afraid to go a little long and just do a cuff. The reason why is traditionally, if you're buying unsamphorized denim, your denim is going to shrink. So you wanna allow a little bit of shrinking, especially in your first watch, because most of the time, the way that denim is kind of cut and sewn, it's, you're gonna have the most amount of your cotton threads are gonna be vertical. So you're gonna see the most amount of shrink in the length. And so allowing for an inch or two of shrinking is super important. So make sure when you're buying your jeans, especially if you're getting new into denim, that you're leaving yourself a little bit of room for shrinking. Unless you like a, like a heavy crop, I'm not gonna tell you how to wear your clothes. I tend to go about an inch past and just cuff from a personal level, but your mileage may vary and you can go with anything based off of that. So next on the list, we're gonna get into a wash versus a soak. So this is something that I just recently learned. I was on all these threads and they say like, three washes, one soak, or one wash, three soak, and I was super confused, so I went and did all the research for you guys. Essentially, the difference between a wash and a soak is a wash, you're gonna have some sort of detergent, more like a machine wash. You can do it in a bathtub, but you're, you're essentially rubbing the fabric together to try to get gook out and things of that nature. And then a soak is gonna be more essentially what it sounds like. You're gonna sit in the bathtub, you're gonna let it just sit in the water. You're gonna kind of splash around the water a little bit, but it's not gonna be as abrasive as a wash. You're definitely gonna get more fading out of a wash than you are a soak. So if you're looking to just kind of clean the denim a little bit, a soak is a better way to go and you're gonna lose less denim and you're gonna have less of a fade, but you're gonna keep in more indigo. That's definitely something to know, especially for me who had no idea what it was and I've been into denim for seven or eight years. So definitely a big thing to do and hugely important within the denim world. And that's my 10, so thank you for coming. I think I got 10, I'm not sure. I got a little ADD and didn't go completely off of my list, so I do a apologize, but those are the 10 denim things that I learned over the last number of years. I hope this helps and I hope this helps with your journey as well. I really appreciate everything that y'all have done and thank you for coming in or thank you for coming. I'll see you soon and goodbye.